Today's video, I'm really excited because I'm going to be starting a new project where we're going to be able to control the Telo DJI drone by using the Oculus Quest 2. We can also use a standalone version, which is going to allow us to communicate via Unity. And also if we want to do a PC build, a Mac build or a Linux build, we're going to be able to also control the drone. But it's also going to help us to test to make sure that the SDK wrapper that we're building is going to work in Unity. I'm also going to show you in other videos how we can basically start doing the mapping with the controller so we can control the drone with our VR controller. We can also control it with our mic if we wanted to use BCI, which is Brain Computer Interface. We can also use hand tracking later on to control the drone with hand tracking. The other thing that I also want to walk you through today is going to be the diagram. So in the diagram, we're going to be looking at every single component that we're going to be building in this series. I want to walk you through how we can communicate with the drone via UDP client. Also, how do we receive information? We're going to be looking at multi-threading. Also, how I do mappings with different controllers. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that we're going to be building in this video series. And I'm also going to be posting all that code as of today in GitHub so you guys can download it and you can look at it while you watch the video. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. This is where we're going to be starting to think about the architecture of the communication between Unity and the drone, which it's going to be connecting, you know, as I have here highlighted, via UDP. So the drone that I have, and there's many different kind of drones, and they communicate either via HDP, some of them communicate via UDP, and some of them over TCP, and then, you know, by using different SDKs. So the Telo drone, which is the one that DJI provides, has a UDP server running on it. So when that UDP server spawns, it basically runs on this, on this IP address, which is 192.168.10.1. And it also has a couple of ports that it's uh, binding to. One of them is going to be the AAA9, which is going to be the controller port. That's going to be the port that we're going to be using to control the drone, meaning we, you know, we want to take off. We want to move the drone to the right, to the left, forward, up and down, and so on we can use that port to communicate. The state port, it's gonna be the port that we're gonna be using for getting information from the drone, such as, you know, the altitude, the battery, the, you know, the angle that the drone has, and then, you know, so on, some different properties that they provide. The, the way that we're gonna be communicating with the drone is gonna be via UDP, but the way that you connect to the drone is going to be via Wi-Fi. So when I start the drone, we're gonna be basically turning on the Wi-Fi, and then I'm going to be connecting either if I'm wearing the Oculus Quest, it's going to, you know, it's going to connect the Oculus Quest to the Telo SSID, which is the, the, basically the name of the Wi-Fi in the, in the Telo drone. And then if we're using a standalone machine, which I, you know, it's PC, Mac and Linux, or any, any other device that has a Wi-Fi wi connectivity, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be going from, from that platform to, to the Wi-Fi network. And then Oculus, like I said, is going to do the same thing. So we're going to be communicating via, via Wi-Fi. That's pretty much what these notes right here. And then, you know, these represents. So how does Unity communicate with the drone? How can we send commands? How can we receive commands? That's what we're going to be building in this video series, which I am really, really excited about doing. These components right here, the drone client, it's going to, I, I kind of wanted to put it into multiple layers because the drone client, it's uh, in the under, underlying technology, the, the implementation, it has a UDP client, which it's going to block the main thread. So if we go back to the fundamentals of Unity, Unity is single threaded, everything runs on the main thread. You can do some operations that you can execute it via an enumerator, but everything at the end runs on the main thread. So if we have, uh, if we want to receive information from the drone, and we use a UDP client, which is what C# -sharp provides, it's going to block the receiving of information. Actually, it's going to block the thread. And if we block Unity from, you know, from looping through updates, and basically going to crash the game. So we can't really run these commands on the main thread. We can send commands on the main thread because that actually doesn't do any blocking, which is what I, what I have right here. We can also receive information, but that's going to be executed on a different thread. And I'm going to show you how we can implement uh, some very basic threading. There's really not too much into it, but I'll explain it to you and then we'll go into the code and also work on it so that you understand it. So we're going to have a drone client that is multi-threaded. Uh, the commands that we're going to be sending are going to be running on the main thread. 
And then we're also going to have a receipt thread that it's going to be, you know, listening to the state port on AA90. And then when we, once we get that information, it's going to get processed to the, to the receiving thread. And therefore, we're going to be able to update some of the information on the canvas and then which therefore uses a logger that I currently have. So that's what these ones do. The, the drone pilot overlay, this component, it's most of these ones are C sharp components. There are mono behaviors or singleton. So we're going to be able to access through a singleton in the code. So the drone pilot overlay, it's only going to be valid for the Oculus Quest 2 because that's what's basically going to allow us to view through the, the real world by using the Oculus Quest. And I'll show you that as well. We also have what's called the drone state manager. And the, the purpose of this is to get a state information, parse some of the state that we get from the drone, and then therefore you know, display that information on the UI canvas, which therefore will get displayed either on the standalone or the Oculus version. The part right here on the bottom right hand side, it's gonna be the controllers, right? So I want this implementation to support not only the, the controller that we have on the standalone platform, which is gonna be bounced on a canvas, but I also wanna do cooler things. We wanna be able to support, like I said, the Oculus Quest controllers, the BCI devices, if we wanna control the drone with our, our mind, or maybe we wanna use hand tracking or other type of controllers that we might think of. For now, this is what I'm gonna be doing. We're gonna be implementing a drone controller that's gonna have a drone action mapping, which is also basically a dictionary that it's going to hold different actions, uh, which are gonna be delegates So we're gonna be binding to. And then based on those actions, we're going to be executing. I'm gonna keep it very simple. We're gonna just write it for the controller, the VR controllers. And then on future videos, we can implement something more generic that can allow us to say, okay, I wanna, I wanna use hand tracking. So therefore it's going to use hand tracking gestures. I wanna use BCI. So if we're using NextMind, we can therefore use the neural tags to, to control the actual drone. First thing that I wanna show you in Unity is how we have this project set up. So right now I call it the Oculus Pass-Through Drone. It's using Unity 2020.316 F1. I have two different scenes that we're going to be going back and forth. This one right here, it's what I call the Oculus Drone Client. And this gray area is the area that we're gonna have as a pass-through. And then the overlay that you see above it is actually a canvas with different text boxes, also a, a logger, and I call it a drone controller center. And then I also have a state, whether the drone is online or offline. And then when we, when we actually last updated the statistics, so that you know, you know how often things are getting updated. So both scenes are gonna be very similar in structure. The exception for this scene versus the other scene is that this one is gonna be for Oculus. The other one is gonna be a standalone. This one has a OVR camera rig versus the other one just has a canvas. So if we look at the OVR camera rig, you're gonna see that on the center eye anchor, I have a canvas, which is the one that you see right here. And I also have the drone pilot overlay, which is the one that we mentioned in front of the diagram. I also have a drone client, which we haven't implemented. I also have a drone controller, which is gonna allow us to control the drone. And also a drone state manager that is going to get the information from the drone. And then the event system is currently not used, but that's also available there. If we go into the standalone drone, we can go ahead and say no. So this one we're gonna be used quite a bit as we get into more into the actual drone client and the controller. And then what we're gonna be doing is, I don't wanna build these from scratch because there's, there's a lot to it. But just know that this is just UI and if you wanna get more into UI you know, implementation and how UI works with Unity, I would recommend that you go into some of those tutorials that I've actually published in the channel about using the, the, new, the new UI. Well, it's not so new anymore, but uh, you know, that you can get more familiar with some of these implementation. So anyway, so we're gonna have the same layout, I mean, similar controllers that we have from the Oculus, the Oculus scene. So I have some stats in here, pitch, job, roll, battery, time, TOF, high, barometer, etc. I also have a logger, just like I show you from the other scene. The state of the drone, whether well offline or online. And also a couple actions that I want to use for you know, testing as we get more into, into the project. And then these are different buttons. Like if you want to press this one, we're going to be calling into the drone client and then executing some of the different commands. So 
Let's go ahead and get started into working on the client. So if you go into the scripts, I already created scripts for most of everything, but most of them are going to be not implement, right? Because I want to show you how to implement those. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the drawn enums, some of the available commands, and these are all in the specs of the Tello. I already know them because I already implemented them, but just so you know, there's one that is called command that is going to initialize the drone. Another one is going to be take off. We're going to be also landing the drone. So I'm actually going to do land. And then we can also do emergency. This is one that I use quite a bit because I keep on crashing the drone. And emergency, if I know that I'm going to crash, I can call that command. It basically turns off the engines and I can catch the drone. So that was, that was one command that I use quite a bit. And then I can use up, down, left, and right. And there's other ones that I'll just copy and paste here in just a minute. The request type, like I said, is going to determine, OK, do I want to send a control command or do I want, do I want to send a read command? Response type, this is what we're going to be getting from the UDP server. And I'm going to actually make him Pascal case because that is more of a standard in C Sharp. Another thing that I also am going to be implementing is going to be a drone action. And this is so that I can map the controller and you know whether I want to do if I map, let's say the the right thumb stick on the on the Oculus controller, I want to have a dictionary that holds all of those actions. So that's what this drawn action is going to be. I can do right, left. We can also do the up, down, forward, and then and then so on. So we'll just have a couple more in here. The other one that I also going to need is going to be different attributes that we're going to need from when we're reading information from the drone. So when I told when I told you about the state of the drone, there's going to be a couple of properties that the Telo device is going to send it, send to us. So that one I'm going to call drone stats attribute, and that one is going to have a whole bunch, and I don't remember all of them. So I'm just going to do battery. I think the other one is speech, and I'm looking at the reference specs so that I know which ones are available. Roll, jaw, and then you know so on. So it's going to be. You know, if I want to get the battery value, I'm going to convert this enum to whatever string I get back from the Telo device, and then it's going to give me a value. Same thing with pitch, roll, jaw, and then some different ones that are also available. So on the drone action type, let's go ahead and go back here. We're going to be needing another enum, and this one is going to be drone speed type. And some of the properties that we're going to be updating, some of the commands that we're going to be sending, are going to take a value from a positive number to a negative number. So I am going to be using this to determine if it's always going to be positive, if it's always going to be negative. So I'll show you how this works. But this enum is just going to allow me to set up a dictionary where I can tell it different options. So that's pretty much most of the different attributes that we're going to need. I'm just going to go ahead and copy everything in here and paste it. And this is just going to have a comprehensive list of everything. So you can see that I added more. These are not using Pascal case. I'll change that later on. But that's what I check into GitHub. So that's what I have all of those. So now that we have that, we're going to be looking at how to implement the, the actual drone client. And if you look at this implementation, I have a singleton. If you want to know how to implement the singleton, that's also going to be in the repo. Here's, you know, how I implemented it. I use that a lot. And then you just pass in the name of the class. So I'm not going to go through that because uh, that's given that I've been doing that in many videos. So you can just look at the code of how that is implementing. So how that is implemented. So the first thing that I'm going to do on that drone client is this is going to be a multi-threaded type uh, implementation, right? So what I need to do is I need to add what's called a private static read-only property read only meaning that we're only going to be initializing this on the you know when I declare it right you can't really set it afterwards so this is an object that I, I don't want to change after the fact so I'm just going to say it's going to be an object it's going to be a lock object and it's going to be you know just a type object this is pretty standard when you're doing multi threading you create an object and then you can do a lock against this object and that's going to make it so that if you have a different thread talking to another thread we can, you know, safely, uh, in a safely manner, talk to the properties that are available, or fields that are available in a different thread. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to also specify different variables that we're going to be communicating with. I was actually going to add them in here. I'm going to go into constants, and these I already have a speed in here. I'm just going to go ahead and change this to say drone speed. 
By default, we're just going to keep that at a, and this doesn't need to be static actually, because we're going to be adding this as constants. The other one that I want to add in here, it's going to also be a string. And this one is going to be the drone IP address. So remember that the IP address of the drone was 192, 168, and then it really was 10, that one. Yep. So it's going to be, you know, pretty standard for, at least for that Telodrone, that is the port that they're going to be, the IP address that they're going to be running on. The other one that we're going to need is going to be the, what they call the drone controller uh, port. And that one is going to be an integer. And that one I'm just going to go, and I'm going to call drone controller port. And then, like I said, it's going to be an integer. So the port on that one is going to be AAA9. And again, this is going to be pretty standard based on their specs. And then I'm also going to need a drone a stay port. And that one is going to be A890. Let's go ahead and change that to be that and reflect that. I'm just checking my cheat sheet just to make sure that I have everything set up correctly. So we're going to be using these quite a bit. So that's what I add into kind of a constant uh, class so that we can access those. So if we go back in here, there's going to be other things that we're going to need. And because we're using a standalone versus uh, pass through for Oculus, I want to make sure that I initialize the drone on the standalone as soon as we play the scene. On the Oculus device, I'm just going to initialize the drone communication by pressing one of the buttons on the controller. So I'm going to add a property here so that we can, you know, basically change that if we wanted to on the standalone versus the Oculus scene. So this one's going to be called connect in awake. You can call it connect during awake. I mean, it's really up to you. And I'm going to make a serialized field. So I need to be bringing in the Unity engine. So the next thing that I'm going to need as well is going to be the UDP client, right? So this is going to be one of the main components. I'm going to need a UDP client. And when you type this out, you're not going to have it available because this is part of a different, you know, namespace. So it's going to be the, the system that net sockets and it's going to say UDP client. And it's going to do that. I don't need it to be exposed. So it's going to be private. And then I'm also going to need a, a receiving thread. So it's going to be a thread that we're going to be using for listening to any state changes. So whether we are getting an OK, we're getting an error, we're getting a change on the properties on the basically the attributes on the drum, we're going to be using this thread to do that. So this one I can call, I think I call it receiving threads. Let's call it, you can call it, I mean, listener, however you want to call it. In my case, I think this is going to work. And then the next thing that I'm going to need is going to be a ball to determine if we initialize the drone. So I'm going to say SDK initialize. And then we're going to do this as a, this one I only want to set it privately. So I'm just going to do a private set. That way we, the drone client is the only one that can initialize this, but anybody else can read information about it because we want to know if the SDK is initialized before we allow people to start controlling the drone. So that's why we need to be able to read that information. So now that we have that, we're going to need a couple more things. So I need to also get statistics about the drone. So I'm going to make this realizable so that I can see the values through the inspector. So I have something called drone stats and that just holds information about the stats, you know, of the drone. So it's going to do drone stats and I'm just going to create a new variable. Uh, basically one a new one of these as soon as it executes. And then the next thing that I want to do is I want to be able to read those stats from a different class. So I'm just going to add a property so that we can do that. So I'm just going to call it drawn stats. And this one is just going to be a getter, right? So we need to do get and then I can do return drawn stats. So that's what that's going to allow us to do. And then the next thing that we need to do here is remember that this is this is a multi-threaded application. So I need to know what's happening. And if we go back into the implementation here on Unity, we have a logger area in our canvas, either on this one or the one for the Oculus device. So I want to be able to update the logger. You know, I want to know what's happening. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different here. And I'm going to be just creating a queue that is going to hold all the different log entries. For now, I'm just going to do a string. Later on, I'm going to be more of an object so that we have more information about it. I want to know, you know, if the if it's an error versus a warning. So for now, we can just do, I think a string works just fine. Go ahead and do a, a queue. And this one, I'm just going to call it log messages. And then we can just do new log messages. And let me go ahead and make sure that I am adding system.collection. There we go. 
There we go. And that is already added. So it's going to be for logging, right? It's going to be our logging implementation. So the first thing that we're going to do, let's go ahead and up, uh, change the update, implement the update, because we're going to be getting the messages from the log. So I'm going to say log messages that count if it's greater than zero then we know that we need to actually display it. So I'm going to say logger that instance, the log information. And then, well, before we log it, we need to actually get the log entry. So it's going to say log entry. And I promise it's going to be more, it's going to get more interesting, interesting as we get into it. So for now, just hang in there and watch the whole video because it's going to be fun to watch. So we're going to dequeue it. This means that we're going to get the log entry out of the log and then we're going to display it by using my login implementation that is going to write to the, to the canvas area. So that's really all we need to do on the update. I'm also going to be implementing the awake. So we can just do awake. And in here, we're going to say, okay, if we have no, if we don't have the, the connecting awake set to true. So if this is set to true, it's basically going to say, it's not going to execute, right? Because we're going to set it, it's going to set it to false. So if we, if we, if we, if we don't have it set it to true, we want to return. But if we have it set to false, that means it's going to be true. It's going to return. But if, sorry, if we have it set to true, that means that we're going to connect during, a, during the awake. So I'm just going to go ahead and call a star drawn. And this is going to call the star drawn method, which is going to create our UDP client instance and then in initialize the threads. So let's go ahead and implement that. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to do void and it's going to be a star or drawn. So this is when, when things are going to start getting more interesting. So in this case, we're going to have to do UDB client and then I need to create a new UDB client because we haven't actually done anything with it. And if we look at the UDP client implementation here, we're going to have a client, I think it's a client property and we also have bind. And if you look at bind, it, this is going to take a, an endpoint that we can, we can basically bind to. And that endpoint, it's going to tell you whether, you know, we're going to be basically what IP address we're going to be communicating with or, or listening to. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to be changing how I implemented this before, but I'm going to be actually using what's called an IP endpoint. And if I do that, I think it's going to, yep. And this is going to be the, the actual, you know, port that we're going to be binding to. And in this case, I want to bind to the state of the, of the drone. So if we look at the state of the drone, it's going to be an IP address, but it's also going to have a specific port. So it's going to say, I'm going to call this one, it's going to be the state IP endpoint. And I'm going to do a new. It's also going to be taking an IP address. So the IP, IP address in here that I want to get information from is going to be, I'm actually going to do any. And I'll show you why that is. And then the port, we're going to be doing my drone, is, let's say my drone constant. And then the drone constant in this case for the state of the of the information of the drone is going to be the drone state port. So that's going to give us information about we're going to be binding to that basically to that IP address and that endpoint if you know that we're going to be listening to. So we're still not receiving any information from the UDP client, but this is going to be basically adding a listener to. I'm also going to need another endpoint for the controller. So let's go ahead and do controller IP endpoint. This one is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to do IP address. On this one, I want to do drone constants. And then I'm going to be using the drone IP address. So in this case, and I also need to use a different port, right? Because it's going to be the port of the, of the controller port. And I'm going to be using this one for sending messages. It's going to be, and this one is going to be for getting a state of the drone. Okay, so that's great, Dilmer. So how do we actually bind and and listen for messages. So remember, we need to do a new thread because if I were to do it here, UDP client and then receive, this is actually going to block the thread. And if I block the thread, Unity is going to crash or your game is going to crash when you publish it. So we don't want to do it this way. What I'm going to do instead is I want to create a new method. This new method, it's going to be my, my receivable, my receive listener. And my receive listener is going to be, I'm going to call it the state receiver. I'm going to do a state receiver. And then this is a, the one that we're going to basically do a while loop and we're going to be we're going to keep listening to it. So we won't do anything right now just yet, but I'm going to be creating a new thread. Remember that we did a thread right here and we call it the receiving thread. Well, we need to actually create that new thread. So I'm just going to go ahead and do new 
thread. And this is going to be taking a new thread uh, parameterized star. There's actually different uh, overloads in here that we can do. We can do a new thread star. That's actually what I'm going to be using. And the cool thing with this is you can pass in uh, an action. So I'm going to say, you know what? When the thread starts, I'm going to be calling this action. And that's the action that we're going to be running in a different thread. It's, it's running a while loop. So we're going to keep checking for that over and over and over. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to just uh, say a star. And that means that we're going to be, you know, we're going to be starting that thread. And, and, then, and then it's going to be, you know, executing this while loop. So before we get in, in more into this implementation here, I want to I want to tell you that the some of the information that it's going to be going back and forth, we want to make sure that we log to the queue, right? So, but before we do that, you need to we, we need to do what's called a check, a, a log check. So we're going to do log, and this is a keyword that we'll use that we, you use when you're doing multi-threading programming, and we're going to be passing our log object. And the first time that I saw this type of code, I thought was well, the you know it was it was weird. <laughs> But then now, now it makes sense because this is running on a different thread. So we can't really talk to any of these variables from a different thread unless we do this. Otherwise, we're going to get an error saying that, you know, we're trying to write. Basically, it's not safe to write to those variables from a different thread. This is going to prevent, it's going to prevent it from throwing an error and make sure that it's safe to write to those variables. So the next thing that we need to do is I'm also going to be doing a try and a catch just in case something happens when communicating with the, you know, with the drone. So I'm going to just go ahead and do just a generic ex exception. For now, we can change, you know, we can change that later. So on the generic exception, I'm just going to do the, the actual log messages and I'm going to queue a new message. And this is going to be message for now. Like I was telling you that I wanted to change the implementation in here and take more of a complex object. That way we can say, okay, this was an error versus uh, just you know, just a log, a log info. But for now, we can just do it. We can just do it this way. Okay, so that's cool, Dilmer. So now how do we get messages from, from the actual drone? And that's the next part that we need to, that we need to work on. So we're going to be reading bytes. So we need to use a byte array. And this is going to be the receive bytes that we get from the, from the actual drone. So we're going to do UDB client. And I need to tell it, not UDB client as a class, the actual UDB client instance. And this is the one that is going to block. But remember, we have an IP endpoint in here. That IP endpoint that we're going to be listening to is going to be the state IP endpoint. So it's going to say that we're going to go to 192.168.10.1 on port on the state IP port. So that's what that one is going to do. And I think that it's all. Oh, and we need to add a ref keyword because that is going to be a reference. It, need to, it needs to have a reference to the IP address. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to convert that information to, to a string so that we can actually read it. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to call these receive data. And for this, we're going to be using encoding and we're going to be bringing that system.txt. And we're going to be using ASCII and get string. And get string is going to require that you pass in bytes. So I'm just going to do passing the bytes and that's going to give us the information that we need. I didn't learn this from day one. I've been doing a lot of this type of coding for a while. So if you don't understand it, don't really worry about it for now. Just know that you're getting a byte array and then you're reading the byte array by converting that information from a byte from bytes to ASCII, which therefore converts it to, you know, to a string. So, so that's what that that's then what we need to do now is we need to check, okay, some of the different responses that we're going to be getting. So I could do something like, like ugly as this and say, you know, if I get an okay, then this is good. Then if I get a receive data, I'm going to be changing this by the way, I'm just going to show you <laughs> what I did and then how I change it. And then if we, I mean, the last one will be like, if we receive contains a semicolon, then I know that we're getting a state information. And I know that because I've been doing a lot of, uh, a lot of coding with, with the Telo drone. But we need to change this. I don't want to make it, I don't want to, I want to, I don't want to implement it that way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do an enum and I'm going to use what's called try parse. And the try parse takes a, a string value. So I'm just going to do, take that string value. It also allows me, so if I look at the overload here, allows me to tell it whether to ignore the casing. I'm going to ignore the casing. And then the enum that I want to convert to, it's going to be one of the enums that we have. So 
In this case, I want to convert it to the, the actual response type that we got, right? So we got a, a response type, so we go in here, and let me make sure, yep. And we need to do out, and this is gonna be the response type that we need to, okay. So I'm gonna, the code that you see below, we're gonna be removing in just a minute. I just wanna show you that as a reference. So what's cool about this is now I can use more of a type way instead of using a string checks. And then we can do something like, okay, if we had an okay back from the, from the UDP server, then we can do X and then we can do the same thing with if we got an error. So if we had an okay, what I wanna do is I wanna initialize the SDK because I know that uh, anytime I do an okay, I know that I'm communicating with the drum. Otherwise I won't be initializing the, the SDK. We could actually set this to false just in case we had an okay one and then, and then we didn't get an okay. Well, actually let's, let's just leave it like that. I'll just log a message in here. This is how I implemented it before, so I'll just leave it. And then we can say the error, we got an error, something like that. Error encounter, or error found during drone communication. Something like that, it doesn't need to be. And then in this one we can say, you know, that we did get an okay. So I think what I did before, I, just, I was just doing the string interpolation and then I just did okay. And then on this one, I just did the error. We, we can do more, you know, logging if you like to. Okay, so that's how that works. And then if we, for some reason, we didn't get a response type that, what that it's going to mean, or that what that could mean is that we get data back from the, from the actual drone as the state of the drone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it this way. So in here, what we're gonna be doing is we need to convert the data received from the drone into stats, right? So I have an extension here that it's going to allow us to pass in the, basically the response from the drone and also convert the, the stats object to something that represents a data structure that we can parse and then show in the canvas. So what we're gonna be doing in here is I need to do I need to get that information. So let's go ahead and look at the drawn, drawn stats. And if you do update stats, this is an extension method. So I'm gonna be passing the received data. And we can pass that to that. And that's going to update the data. And then, you know, therefore, then what's gonna happen is these drawn stats is going to have, if we go back into the implementation, it's going to have all these different properties populated for us. So I did something similar already and it was, it took quite a bit of time to guess. I don't wanna go through that implementation. What I'm gonna do is gonna copy and paste that. So we go back in here and then paste the implementation. I'll just walk you through what is that, what it's doing. So we're passing, we're basically extending drone stats. We're getting the string response. It's a delimiter response. So I am basically splitting the by semicolon. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna get something like bat and then it's going to have the bat value. It's going to be, I don't know, maybe 99% of the battery and it's gonna be separated by a different value. So this one might be the yaw and then this might be, you know, one, two, three, I don't know, different value and then and so on. So what we're saying here is gonna be splitting all of these different values. And then I'm also going to split the result of that, which is by using a, a column and that's what I'm doing in here. So I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get the first value, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna ignore the casing, and I'm gonna convert that to a drawn stat attribute. If you look at the drawn stat attribute, it's gonna have every single one of those attributes. And then I'm just gonna do a switch statement if the attribute is battery, then I'm changing and getting the value, the value I'm getting from that last splitted value, and then it, it'll just basically set them all for me. So that's what that part it's going to be, it's going to be doing. So that's this part. We're gonna be starting the drone. We're gonna be starting the receiver. Now we need to be able to send messages to the drone, right? Right now we're just listening, but we're, we haven't really sent any, any messages. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have two different methods. One of them is going to be a send command that is just gonna take a string and that string is just gonna be, you know, the, the raw command. I'm also going to have an overload and that one is going to be taking a different type and that's going to be a drone request. And this is so that we have more of a type version of this. And we're gonna be using these on the, on the drone action mappings. For now, I just know that we're gonna be doing 
two of them and they're just gonna be implemented a little bit different. So before I keep going, let's go ahead and go into my, my contracts here and look at the drone request. I'm also going to be copying the drone request so that you guys can also use it and we don't have to go through the whole thing. But it's gonna copy that and then paste it here and it's gonna be fairly simple. So we're gonna have a couple of properties in here. One of them is gonna be the payload. The payload is gonna be the entire command that we're gonna be sending to, to the drone. So this could be something like we're sending a command which is going to initialize the SDK. We're sending, let's say that we want to take off. So that's going to also get passed to the, to the payload. Request type, I, I told you what that was. We can do, we can send, you know, a drone request, which is gonna be either a control command, or we can also do a read command, which we can specify here. For now, we can just do a control command. And then the command is gonna be, you know, show you what those were as well. If we go to the definition, it's gonna be any of those. And then we also have the payload. I did a private property here because by default, the payload is gonna be set with the command that we're passing in. But if we do a more comprehensive command, we're going to be handling that in here. And I'm also going to allow it for pass passing in a question mark. So what's gonna happen if we pass in a read command, it's gonna be appending a question mark to the end of the command. So I'm gonna say, okay, if the request type is read command, I'm gonna be putting a question mark, otherwise it's gonna be empty. If the payload that, you know, if we initialize the payload, but it's blank, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be grabbing the command property and I'm gonna be adding the added param. Otherwise, if it's, not, if it's not empty, I'm just gonna be passing in whatever payload we pass to it. And then, you know, based on if it's a read command or a control command, we're gonna be adding this last parameter. Anyways, that, that's going to make, make more sense as we get more into it. So that's how that's gonna work. So on the same command, there's gonna be a couple of things I need to do here. So I'm gonna do enum and I'm gonna be trying to parse this. So the, I'm gonna be parsing this to a drone command, right? Because I'm pa that's what I'm passing in. So I'm gonna do out and it's gonna be a drone command. And then it's gonna say, this is gonna be a drone command. You're gonna see that I do, I use a lot of enums because I don't like to use strings specifically. So it just keeps the code more maintainable. And, and also I think it looks, I think it looks cleaner. So anyway, so drone request is what we're gonna be doing in here and I'm gonna be doing initialization here. So the request type in this case is going to be, we're gonna be controlling the drone. So I'm gonna do control command. And then the command that we're gonna be passing in here, it's gonna be just a drone, a drone command. So that's cool, but we haven't really tell the UDB client that we need to, what we need to do. So what we need to do now is first, I want to, I want to log this information too. Remember, this one is gonna be running on the main thread so we can basically log directly or we can just just keep it consistent and say log messages we do that again log messages and queue and in this one what i did before is i did a combination of of properties so that we knew we could see through the canvas what we were doing so i'm gonna do command i'm also going to be doing one request the drone request here is going to be request type so that i know what kind of request we're doing and then lastly, I'm going to do the payload so that we can see the actual command that we're sending the whole thing. Okay, so we can log it. And then lastly, what we need to do is we now need to do the reverse. We need to be able to send a by array. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be the message or the command that we're gonna be sending to the drone. So I'm gonna do encoding. And then remember, this one's gonna be the ASCII. And then I'm gonna say get bytes. The get bytes is going to be, you know, based on the payload that I have right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this whole thing here and we can just paste it and we can do, I don't need to, I was gonna do a string interpolation. I don't know what I did uh, that originally, but anyways, that's what, that's what that does. That's going to grab that string and it's gonna convert it to, to bytes. This one is not gonna block, so we can just do same on the main thread. I'm gonna grab the messages. I need to know the length, so we need to specify the length. And then lastly, we need to tell it, okay, what, what IP address, what endpoint we're gonna be sending it to. In this one, we wanna send all the commands that we're gonna be sending, we're gonna be sending on the control IP endpoint. So we're gonna go ahead and do that here. And that basically is gonna work. It's gonna send it to a controller IP endpoint. On this other case, I'm gonna do something similar on the overload. And then, but we're gonna be taking the drone request already built for us. I'm gonna be sending that message. I'm gonna send it that also to the controller IP endpoint. So 
that's basically everything that we need to do on this guy. I'm just checking my notes just to make sure that I have everything that we need to. The other thing that we need to do at the very end, just to make sure that we don't, you know, we, we keep memory and um, this application optimizes, we need to call on destroy. We actually need to bind to the on destroy. So when on destroy gets executed, we're going to check, okay, if the UDB client was not, is not null, which it won't be on every case. Well, I guess unless we didn't initialize it for some reason, but if it's not null, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, I want to close the UDP client and I'm also going to be disposing the UDP client. That way we keep things, you know, clean. I'm also going to be doing that with the receiving thread. I'm going to say if the receiving thread is not null. I'm also going to be basically aborting the, the thread. I don't think there is a dispose with the, just want to make sure. Yep. So I think that's what I did before. So I'll just keep it. So this just keeps things clean so that we have, you know, good management, uh, basically memory management. So that's everything that we need to do on the drone client. So now if we go back into Unity, we're going to be binding a couple of these uh, different buttons. And if we go into the initialize SDK button here and we look at the on click event, right now we don't have anything bound to, right? So if we go ahead and add it and let's go actually go into the drone client and this is, this is cool. I have the drone stats. This is why I made this object serializable so that we can see it through the inspector. In the standalone version, I want to connect to a drone on the awake method. That way when we, when the awake method gets executed, we are going to be, you know, getting everything ready for the drone to connect to, to Unity. Actually, Unity to connect to the drone. So that's what we're going to do there. And then lastly, what I need to do is we're going to go into the initialize SDK button. And this is where we're going to start binding all of our different methods in here. So we're going to go drone client. And then we're going to have the send command. And this one is going to be, you know, different commands that we're going to be executing. So if we want to initialize it, remember that the command is going to be command. In the takeoff button, we're going to do something similar. We're going to drag and drop the, the drone client, go into drone client, and then look at our send command. And then in this case, we need to take off, right? So remember, it was take off. So I'll just type that in. Landing, if we want to land, go ahead and go back into that. I'm going to add an on click event, and then drag and drop the drone client again, drone client. And then this one, it's going to be land. Then emergency, this is one that I really enjoy working with because I kept on crashing. I wish I had footage about doing that because it was pretty, it was pretty funny. And even my kids were laughing every time was, I was crashing the drone. But anyways, this will be <laughs> emergency and that it's everything that we need to do for, in order for that to work. So I think that's everything that we need to do there. And in the next video, I think I'm going to be binding to the stats and that way we don't we don't take more time on this video i think it's 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 long enough so what i'm going to do next is to go ahead and hook my drone up and make sure that we can do some of these actions so i get the drone up and running you're going to see there's a light here on the tello and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the drone back here so that we don't so basically that's in crash onto to my my head <laughs> So drone is connected. If we go here into my action center and then go into network, you're going to see that I now have Telo here listed and then I can set it whether to connect automatically or not. I'm just going to go ahead and hit connect. And then if we go back here and let's see, let me go ahead and make sure that I am connected. So I'm currently connected. Let's go ahead and get back into Unity. If everything works, I should be able to initiate the SDK. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play make sure that things are working. So we're going to get a warning here saying that we can't really connect to the Oculus device. Well, we haven't really done anything with Oculus, so that's normal. Logger enable is the first thing that you're going to see. We haven't really coded the state, so we're going to do that in the next video, but I'm going to initialize this. So this is great news. We had an okay. That means that we were able to communicate with the drone and the drone response was an okay. And then what I can do, if this is going to work, if I did everything correctly, the drone that is behind me, we should be able to basically take off. And let me make sure that I can see. You can probably hear it right now. It's sitting right behind me, right there. And it's probably going to crash. I'm going to call emergency. And I did crash it. <laughs> I don't know that. I think I take off. I don't, th I don't think emergency worked for some reason. Let me make sure that 
send message emergency has not receiver. Let me make sure that that, it's, that is accurate. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back here and see. So I did do emergency and I did do, oh, okay. Yeah, so this one I bound to the wrong method. So let me, let's try that one more time. And that, it's a cool test of why we need to test things. So I thought it was pretty funny. But okay, let's go into drone client and then send command. And now it should be bound to the right method. We can also check land, make sure that we have send command and then take off and then initialize should be just fine. All right, guys, so let's try this again. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. Make sure that we can connect to the drone. So logger is enabled. Initialize, so we, I was able to communicate with the drone. I'm gonna go ahead and take off. And you can see the drone right behind me, right there. I'm gonna go ahead and land it. See if we can land it. And it's going to try to land as good as it can. And if I can land, I'm just gonna go ahead and call emergency. I think it's just because my office is really small, it's really hard for the drone to, to find an area of where to land. But I had an emergency because of that. So I think that's everything that I'm gonna be covering today. I think for the next video, because this is already long enough, I'm going to be covering how we can update the state information. And then I'm also going to be basically binding to the star stats, how to execute that. And then we'll start looking, we're gonna be starting to look at some of the implementation that we need to do for Oculus. And then hopefully by the end of that video, we should be ready to start looking into pass through. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about these, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.